Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. Today we've got a lot of hard hitting questions. Like would you be the jerk for telling the boy your brother became a foster father to that he isn't your nephew? We'll find out but first a story from not a hip. Am I the jerk for being annoyed my mother in law ate my dinner? Tonight my mother in law came over for dinner. I made Swedish meatballs and gravy with mashed potatoes, broccoli and homemade bread. In my house, we tend to eat in the lounge room unless it's a big event, so I dish up everyone's meal. Kids, mother-in-law, and husband, I take their meals to them and then before serving mine, I have to run out to the line and grab some clothes that I hung out earlier. No big deal. I served up generous portions for everyone, way more than I thought they could eat. But when I got back from the line, my dinner was gone. I asked if anyone knew what had happened to the food on the bench and mother-in-law pipes up and says she wanted some more. She's piled her bowl full of meatballs, way more than she would ever eat. I'm stunned. I figure, oh well, I'll just grab some fast food a bit later or something because maybe she was super hungry. My bad for not cooking enough. But once she's eaten what she wants, she asks for a container so she can take her extra portion home for dinner the next night. I'm pretty annoyed at this point and mention that it was meant to be my dinner for that night not her takeaway meal for the next night. She says, oh well, you can eat it then, and I reply with, no thank you, and hand her a container. I didn't want to eat her leftovers. She leaves and my husband puts the kids to bed. When he comes back in, he asks what's wrong and I tell them that I'm hungry. I cooked the meal and didn't get to eat any of it and I'm pissed off about it. He agrees mother-in-law was way out of line and messages her that her actions were greedy and selfish. She owes me an apology. She replies telling him that I acted like a jerk. I should have cooked more and anticipated that she would take home a portion for the next day. She offered me what she didn't eat and I didn't want it. It's not her fault that I owe her an apology for my attitude and snarky comment. She's also posting on social media about what happened and people are saying that I'm a jerk and a rude hostess. I should also add that I'm currently pregnant, and I feel like I can be quite unreasonable at times due to hormones. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. I think OP was being a great hostess. I think they were an awful guest up until the point where they grabbed somebody else's serving and gave it to themselves. Honestly on Facebook, I don't know if you can trust any of the people's opinions in those circles. Like, I feel like it's all one, like, big supportive hive mind where, like, if I'm coming to Facebook to vent and all my Facebook friends are there, they're probably gonna back me up regardless of how ridiculous the outcome is. Would you guys agree with that? That the opinions of the Facebook circles are probably untrustworthy? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Pinky Binders. Am I the jerk for locking up my valuables in my house? I, 21-year-old female, and my boyfriend, 23-year-old male, have been living together for two years. There's always been a bit of money struggle, as I used to make more than him and have usually been picking up the slack in our household. However, I've started a new job and I'm earning a lot less than before, so I've started to be more cautious about the amount I'm spending. During our relationship, I would usually buy all of his toiletries and most household products. I told him I wouldn't be doing this anymore, as I need to cut down my own spending, and he also works and is capable of buying things on his own. I thought we'd agreed to this, but as time has gone on, I've noticed all of my expensive skincare and even my own deodorant was being used up really quickly. I asked him multiple times to please not use my stuff, and even bought him his own skincare so that he could have his own things. The thing that set me off was I'd bought myself a $220 face wash that is only supposed to be used sparingly. I have horrible eczema that I have prescriptions for, and the products I buy are specifically for my eczema. I hadn't used it in a while, and when I picked up the bottle, it was empty. He laughed and said he would replace it, then refused when he learned of the price. I took inventory of everything else I owned and found out he'd used up to $800 worth of product in around 3 months. I know he isn't naive because I tell him the price of everything I get and tell him not to use them. I ended up buying a safe that I put under the sink and I put everything I had left inside and hid the key so when I go to shower and get ready, I can use my own things and not worry about not affording to keep my skin in check. 
When he found out, he lost it and said that I was overreacting and that I don't trust him. It's turned into a massive deal and my friends are thinking I'm being harsh. I simply cannot afford to keep buying more skincare and I've even been hospitalized this year due to a huge flare up I had after running out of products. He's taking it very seriously and I don't know what else to do as I've already tried asking, am I the jerk? You know, this guy's making it a big deal about how it seems like OP doesn't trust them. Well, I think it's exactly that. They went and used all of their products behind their back. How can they trust them? This whole thing is about the fact that OP can't trust them. This boyfriend needs to take a long, hard look at himself and realize that he's created a situation where OP wants to turn to putting a safe in the bathroom sink because they can't control themselves. For a lot of people, they wouldn't even let it get to that point. They would just break up with them. This next story is from Petty Brother. Am I the jerk for refusing to babysit my nibblings? I, 32 year old male, am child free. Not because of childhood trauma or because I think the earth is overpopulated. I just don't like kids and don't want to invest my time and energy in raising them. I have an older sister, 35 year old female, and a younger brother, 28 year old male. My sister has three kids, ages 7, 5, and 2. I moved out of our hometown when I was 19, so I've never lived close to them. When I visited during the summer, I was more than happy to take the kids out for a couple of outings, but I usually either had one of their parents or a babysitter with me. Now, my older sister tends to dump her kids on anyone she can sucker. She's a stay-at-home mom, but the kids spend more time with our parents or our brother. For years now, my brother would call to vent to me about her, how she just drops her kids at his doorstep and leaves wouldn't answer her phone, so he would be stuck with them for hours. I moved back three months ago, and from the get-go, she wanted me to set a room for her kids in my house. I shut her down hard. I also told her that I will not be babysitting her kids, not unless it is a true emergency and she can't find a babysitter. She thought I was bluffing. The first time she dropped unannounced to leave her kids, I didn't open the door. She said that she'll be leaving them and I'll be forced to act like a decent uncle. I said all that I will do is getting the cops called on you for abandonment. She was furious. I haven't babysat the kids once these last three months. I took them on four outings, but no babysitting to suit her. Now she's calling me a jerk for not helping. I don't give a freak about this part. But my younger brother's also pissed at me for not helping ease his burden a bit. I told him it's not my fault that he doesn't know how to set boundaries with her. After years of trying to gently encourage him to stand up for himself and commiserating with him, and now he's calling me a jerk too. So am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. Nobody is entitled to babysitting their siblings' kids. Like OP said, it's great if you help out when it's a true emergency and you know there's nowhere else to turn to. But you gotta be seriously entitled to think that just because you have siblings and just because they're reachable that they would ever be just full-time babysitters for you or even part-time babysitters. I know they say it takes a village to raise a kid, but you're not supposed to expect only the village to raise the kid. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Poor Unfortunate Gluten, Am I the jerk for kicking my sister out for bringing gluten into our gluten-free kitchen? My daughter's on the more severe end of celiac. Any cross-contamination would set her back for weeks. It's taken us years to get her properly diagnosed and treated. And at 10 years old, she's now underweight and has severe anxiety about food. She will not eat if she feels it's unsafe, and it's hard for me to blame her. Our house has both a kitchen and a kitchenette in the basement complete with full sets of pans and utensils. Our main rule for the house is that there's absolutely no dairy, gluten, or seafood to be kept or cooked in the kitchen. Our older son is allergic to seafood and my wife is lactose intolerant. The kitchenette is for items containing those ingredients. My sister and her kids had to move in with us for personal reasons. They live in the basement bedrooms and when they moved in, we very clearly explained this rule to them and why. It took less than a week for us to find a box of pasta in the kitchen. We explained the rule and moved it and she was apologetic. A month later, my daughter comes to us in a panic because my sister was making fried chicken in the kitchen. My sister was apologetic but insisted she needed to because the kitchenette was too small. 
It felt harsh, but we moved all of the food to the basement, threw out every single pan and utensil she may have used, and deep cleaned the kitchen. These incidents making the kitchen no longer 100% guaranteed safe has made her regress in therapy. We're working on it, but unfortunately right now it's so bad again that we have to feed her exclusively takeout from the one gluten-free restaurant around, unless we want her in inpatient care. Which takes us to last Sunday. I get home and my daughter is having the worst panic attack I've ever seen. My mom and sister were in the kitchen making an entire Sunday dinner. Spaghetti, mozzarella sticks, garlic bread, the works. I lost it. I ended up absolutely screaming at them that they were ruining my life and had threatened my daughter's life for the last time and I had had it. I threw all the food out into the yard and told my sister if she really cared that little about her own niece's life, she could get the freak out of my house. Now my mom's mad at me for kicking out my sister and her kids when they're vulnerable over a food allergy, but I don't care. She can even leave the kids here if she absolutely needs to, but I'm done with her. We have one rule. One. My wife agrees with me, but thinks I should give one last chance and just not allow sister to bring any food into the house. My mom can't take her in, and she can't afford to rent anywhere, so she would be homeless if we didn't let her stay. I'm not sure I'm in the wrong here. I would agree with OP and say that they're not in the wrong here. They have one rule, and as apologetic as they may be, they're not actually trying, like at all. This is like leaving a $5 bill on your desk right in front of you. They waltz in, start moving their hand towards the bill, and you're like, what are you doing? You can't take that. Oh, sorry. They leave. Later in the day, they return, slowly reach out for it again. What are you doing? You can't take that. Oh, sorry. Walks away. They're just going to come back and try to grab that $5 bill again. It seems pretty clear this person does not give a crap. This next story is from no longer an aunt. Am I the jerk for telling him he isn't my nephew? My brother, 41-year-old male, became a foster father to a young boy 10 years ago. The child's father passed away, and his mother was in a rehab center. The assignment was supposed to be temporary. The foster worker said the young boy would probably be there six months to a year. He ended up staying with my brother for six years. In this time, my brother did a ton for this kid, well above and beyond requirements. He made sure the kid always had a nice new clothes, fun toys, got to eat what he wanted, took him on vacations, paid for expensive activities, everything. By the time six years had passed, we all thought this child was a permanent addition to our family. Then shortly after his 14th birthday, his mother was able to resume custody. And just like that, he was gone with almost no notice. I can't explain how devastated my brother was. He was beyond distraught. He thought of this kid like a son, and then legally they weren't anything to each other. He's 18 now and just started community college. My brother has a different foster child staying with him now. Even though life's gone on, I know my brother's still in pain. Recently, I ran into this now adult at the grocery store with his mom. He acted very happy to see me and introduced me to his mother as Auntie My Name. I said, I'm not your aunt. He looked a little hurt and then tried to continue the conversation. We talked awkwardly for a couple of minutes, and then I finished my shopping. I told my brother about the awkward interaction later, and he said I was a witch for no reason, and should have just accepted the title gracefully as it cost me nothing. I disagree. I let this kid be my nephew for six years, and then I didn't see him again until now. Why should I have to let him call me his aunt when he hasn't been a member of our family for four years? My brother called me egotistical, but then he dropped it. I don't understand why I'm the bad guy. Am I the jerk? My question is, was it the kid's choice to go back to their mom? Was it the kid's choice to cut off the rest of the family? Did the kid grow up to be cold and hardened and changed? Did they say, oh, I don't want to be a part of that family anymore? Because if no, then OP is a huge jerk here. Our next story is from AITA, Exhausted Wife. Am I the jerk for refusing to cook dinner? I, female 23, have been married to my husband John, male 24, for a year now, and recently, aka 5 weeks ago, we welcomed our first baby, female. I'm currently on maternity leave, which my husband has interpreted it as me being a stay-at-home mom instead of taking time to rest before I needed to return to work. I don't really mind it too much since cleaning my house is soothing for me and a good distraction for my sleep deprivation. I've always been this way and John still does his share of household chores. 
He does most of the outdoor work and he'll sweep and vacuum, but recently he's been writing me about not having dinner ready when he gets home. He works from 8 to 5.30, so it's not a completely unreasonable time for dinner, but it's not like I can just stop taking care of our daughter to cook him a meal. I can usually talk him down, and he'll watch daughter while I cook. A few days ago, however, he came into the house and began berating me for not having dinner ready and waiting so he could just walk in and sit to eat. I was actively changing my daughter's diaper while he went on this rant. He went as far as to say that he put up with my laziness for long enough and that I needed to do my job properly. I didn't say anything to him at that moment. I went and cooked dinner, and he seemed pretty proud of himself for winning that conversation. But I only have a few more weeks to stay home with my baby girl, and I'm not going to have that stomped on because of my husband. So ever since that day, I go to my mom's house for dinner. She's totally okay with this, by the way. I don't cook anything for John, and I'm already at my mom's by the time he gets home. I still clean at home and keep the house tidy, but I don't cook dinner. John's been furious with me and has been telling me that I'm a jerk for leaving him to starve. I just want to have a peaceful environment before I have to go back to work. So Reddit, am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk, but my question is, when you go back to work, what's going to change that this husband's going to start acting nicer? Or the dinner issue is going to resolve. I don't know if he thinks real life is supposed to be like the Flintstones where Fred gets home and Wilma has a giant dinosaur roast cooking for him. But marriage isn't the glorious 1950s depiction of it. I think if the wife loves to cook and wants to do it, that's great. But there's something just kind of disgusting about the behavior of getting home from work and being like, Alright woman, where's my home cooked meal that's hot and ready for me when I'm here? It's at court next to the divorce papers. Our next story is from Acceptable Koala 651 Am I the jerk for banning my husband from visiting my sister with me because he won't stop trying to debate her and her husband? My sister Marie, 29, and her husband Zach, 40, had their first child, a beautiful baby girl, two months ago. They've been pretty nervous parents, so when my husband Tom, 42, and I, 37, were invited to finally meet our niece, I was thrilled except I was worried about Tom making a butt out of himself. You see, Tom and Marie have always had a hard time getting along because they don't agree on nearly anything. And Tom's always gotten a kick out of challenging Marie on their differing views because they're both very opinionated. The thing is to Tom, it's funny to watch Marie act when he says things to provoke her, and Marie always wants to prove his views wrong. In his head, because she was in grad school for social sciences, she finished right before having her baby, and is knowledgeable about the topics that Tom wants to argue about, Marie shouldn't have a problem with debating him because it's literally her job. In the past, both Tom and Marie have initiated these arguments, and they both have been guilty of taking it too far in the past. But ever since she got pregnant slash had a baby, Marie's calmed down a lot, whereas Tom still tries to bait her into debates about touchy subjects mainly politics and personal values. This got to the point where Marie blocked him on all social media a few months ago. Before we went to visit, I asked Tom to just be nice to Marie and Zach and not start anything. Tom said that he would try his best. I told him that I would be very upset with him if he tried to bait Marie or Zach into an argument. Tom started out the evening pretty strong and kept to himself until it was revealed that Zach was going to be the one to stay home with their daughter. Tom made a comment like, Oh, I thought mom was supposed to do that. Zach said it was pretty sexist for Tom to say that, and when Tom asked how, Zach told him that moms can have careers too, and that Marie shouldn't have to give up all the work she just did. Tom started on a tangent, and Marie cut him off and told him to either quit or leave, because she's done entertaining his nonsense. Tom laughed it off, but it was still very awkward after this. We didn't stay for long after, and when we got home, I told Tom that I'm done with him embarrassing me and that he's not allowed to join me whenever I visit Marie again, if I'm even invited back. I told him that it doesn't make him look smart when he always insists on having these conversations, that it just makes him look like a jerk and me like a fool. Tom said I'm blowing this way out of proportion and that it's not his fault they got so offended and that if anything, they were rude to kick him out over his opinion. But Marie didn't do anything to him this time. She didn't snap back at him. She didn't call him names. She just asked him to stop. Am I the jerk? Am I being unreasonable? I've known people in my life like Tom. 
The people who have very strong opinions, and if your opinion varies from them, especially in like a perceived weakness kind of way, they will try to trample all over that. I think OP is not the jerk. My question is, while Marie's done entertaining his nonsense, is OP ever going to be done entertaining his nonsense? I just can't imagine waking up in bed next to somebody every single day that has such a huge character flaw that I can't get over. And it's something that I'm willing to bet that OP might not have mentioned, but they probably do to OP as well. Our next story is from Blue Carrot 2 Am I the jerk for buying personalized stationery for my daughter so it can't be redistributed in class? My little girl Mia, 9-year-old female, has started a new school recently. We moved recently and she had to start a new school. I got a list of supplies that the teacher required, plus extras like extra packs of crayons, etc. You know the deal. While I don't necessarily agree with this, it's not a hill I was willing to die on. So I got everything on that list. However, I also got my child her own supplies. Now, the list didn't say to not label them. Mia is very particular on what type of stationery she likes. I've heard horror stories of kid stuff being redistributed and them ending up with crappy supplies. So I sat down with Mia and we got her personalized binders and notebooks and pencils with her name on Etsy. It's all part of the item so it can't be removed and given to another kid. Like I said, as requested, I bought extra binders, etc. It turns out that I was right to do so. When Mia got home, she brought a passive-aggressive note from the teacher about Mia's supplies. Apparently, she tried to gather all the supplies and have kids pick another one. She requested that I switch Mia's supplies to generic ones, which I'm refusing to do. The teacher has now requested that I stop by to have a chat regarding Mia's supplies. I posted in the local Facebook group, and parents are divided, so I need another opinion before I go meet with Mia's teacher. Am I the jerk for buying my child personalized stationery so it can't be taken away from her? I just fail to see in any worldview how you can be the jerk for buying your kid supplies for school with the intention that your kid is the one who uses those school supplies. What the teacher's doing here is showing the ugly side of communism. No, comrade, your binder is my binder. This next story is from an anonymous poster. Am I the jerk for telling my husband that if he doesn't stop his daughter, I'll ban her from our celebration? I, 42-year-old female, got married to my boyfriend Jack, 47-year-old male, a year ago. We both have children from our previous marriages. I have two daughters and he has one son and one daughter. The problem is, is that his daughter, Melissa, 27-year-old female, is very catty. Ever since I and my daughter have come in their lives, she's despised us. I never came into this relationship thinking I'd have any sort of authority or parental role in their lives. I respected their relationship with their dad and never got in the middle. Deep down, I think Melissa's very jealous of my daughter, 24-year-old female. Melissa has repeatedly had meltdowns on any important day for Celeste and try to control her special days. The reason I think it's jealousy is because Celeste is successful almost has her PhD in psychology, engaged to a good woman, and is beautiful. Celeste throughout all of this has stayed cordial. However, last night, while talking about the plans for Celeste's graduation party, my husband asked if we could accommodate Melissa by making the day also about her. I told him no, and that when Melissa has an accomplishment, we will celebrate her. He got upset and said he told her we would, and that she was already making plans. I told him if he doesn't stop her, I will uninvite her. He's been mad at me since. Am I the jerk? This is going on with their 27-year-old daughter? This is the kind of behavior that you would expect out of a 7-year-old daughter. If OP went and banned them, they wouldn't be the jerk for that. You got some deep-rooted issues to be doing that at 27 years old. And I think it's pretty clear the husband has excessively coddled her. To me, I don't mean to be rude, but it seems like she's kind of stunted. If you're that hung up on some 24-year-old having a celebration for their graduation because it's not about you, there's some deep issues going on here. Our next story is from Wonderful Life, 1837. Am I the jerk for not wanting to share my parents' inheritance with my sister? We live in Germany. My parents did a legal procedure with some lawyers to leave my sister out of their inheritance. My sister and my parents never had a good relationship. She left the house when she was 16. I've always been kind of neutral. I still saw my sister after she left, but I also lived with my parents and took care of them. 
I know my parents have been unfair to my sister, but they're still my parents and I love them. My dad died from cancer six years ago and my mother had dementia. She died last year. I took care of both of them until they sadly passed away. As I said, they did something with some lawyers and put the house and other stuff in my name when they got sick, so my sister wouldn't have anything. Yet when my mother died, I offered to my sister to give her half of what my parents gave me, but she refused and said she didn't need anything from them. I spent the money. I'm now living in my parents' house, but I need to fix it a bit. I also opened a bakery, which still isn't doing good. I opened four months ago and paid debts and stuff. My sister contacted me to ask for the money I offered before because she has debts and she needs it. I told her I can't give it to her anymore because I have debts too and I'm counting on using the money. She called me and told me her children will be homeless if I don't give her the money. I feel bad but I can't help her now. I have some money from the heritage but as I said, I'm counting on that money to pay my own debts. Am I wrong for not wanting to share this money with her? So from the get-go, this was an inheritance that OP's parents always intended to go to OP. OP never had to offer the money to begin with. That was just an extremely generous thing. So for them to deny it and then come crawling back? No, they're not entitled to this money to begin with. OP's not the jerk. Our next story is from Sad Advantage 8869 Am I the jerk for taking back my grandmother's heirloom veil and not letting my future daughter-in-law wear it? So I really need an unbiased opinion and can't get one in my real life. I have two children, Caleb, 29, and Anna, 24. They've always been close up until this issue. Anna was bullied in middle and high school by Violet, 25. We did go to the school multiple times, as well as talk to Violet's dad, and to put it bluntly, I could see where she got it from. The bullying affected Anna's self-esteem, social relationships, and their senior year, Violet slept with Anna's boyfriend, which devastated her. Long story short, Caleb got a very impressive job opportunity he just couldn't turn down, but it meant working for Violet's dad. We all encouraged him to take it, but were blindsided when he later revealed he was dating Violet. They've now been together for two and a half years and the wedding is coming up. I'm absolutely not happy about this and Caleb is aware. Violet has apologized to Anna, and Anna is willing to be civil with her for things like holidays. Caleb is very defensive if the bullying is brought up, and says Violet experienced a great deal of trauma as a teenager, and we need to be forgiving. Now the issue at hand is the veil. My grandmother had a vintage designer veil, a very unique pattern, and I previously said Caleb and Anna could both use it for their weddings if they wanted to. My wife, with no prior discussion, gave it to Violet, who loved it. She's really into vintage fashion and even specifically picked a dress to compliment it. Anna recently expressed that it was hurtful to her. She didn't want Violet to have a family heirloom, and it felt too much like erasing history. I immediately understood and told Caleb and Violet that she couldn't wear it. I said when I told Caleb he could use it, I obviously couldn't anticipate the girl he was going to bring home. Violet gave it back to me, but Caleb blew up and uninvited me from the wedding. Now my wife is angry at Anna and I and says I need to give it back to Violet. She said Caleb never truly seemed happy before. True. And that if I was a good dad, I would at least like Violet for making him happy. She said I'm coddling Anna, favoring her over Caleb, and she threatened to steal the veil and sneak it to the wedding. Well, first of all, I think OP's not the jerk because it's their grandmother's heirloom, not their grandmother-in-law's heirloom. So for the wife already to go behind OP's back and try to give that away, that's not cool. Second of all, this is all about just trying to protect Anna's sanity. To people who weren't affected, high school bullying might be like a, oh, just leave it in the past, you can move past it. But it doesn't exactly work that way, and honestly, for somebody like Anna... I can see how that would completely ruin the grandmother's heirloom veil forever. Because why would Anna want to use it? It would just go to be unused after that. Or you would give the grandmother's heirloom veil to somebody that's not in your immediate family. And our final story of the day is from Texas Stargazer 18. Am I the jerk for not telling my roommate that I bought a house until after I closed? I recently closed on a property and didn't tell my roommate until after I closed. My roommate was a good friend of 8 years until they reacted poorly to this news. 
I didn't feel comfortable telling them as I was going through the home buying process due to a number of factors, including the fact that I wasn't sure if I was ever going to land the plane since my bank didn't make the mortgage process easy for me. I'm the type of person who tries not to share premature news. However, upon telling them yesterday morning, they freak out and tell me I should have looped them in on the process because that's what friends do when they're a stakeholder in my life. They're hurt because I didn't tell them earlier and it damages our relationship because I withheld the news. I tried to soften the blow of the news by getting them cupcakes, but they threw the cupcakes clear across the room once they heard of the news. I honestly don't think it was incumbent on me to share the news before I felt comfortable. And given how they're reacting, I think my senses were right. This is also not going to impact them financially either, as I'm giving them more than 30 days notice to find a new living situation. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk here. I mean, I think the fact of the matter is they're acting out because it kind of sucks that they're going to have to find another apartment to rent. They're probably going to have to find another roommate. They were probably more than comfortable staying there with their friend of eight years. But they have to accept that people move on. And I don't think OP's obligated to go to their friend and be like, Hey, so I might not get the house at all, but I'm looking around for a place to live and rock the boat before it's even a sure thing. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another Am I the Jerk Here story that was absolutely crazy, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.